Rock Quiz, the show that happily reminds you that the lead singer of ska group Bad Manners, Buster Blood Vessel, once owned a hotel in Margate called Fatty Towers, <laughs> catering specifically to larger customers with features such as extra large beds and baths, as well as fatty meals. The hotel closed in 1998 and in 2004, Buster had his stomach stapled. <laughs> True story. Now, ready to make tough calls, telephone calls and loo rules, your rock and roll arbitrator, Brian Nankervis. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Julia. No comments from me tonight. Rockwiz viewers know what to expect. So let's give it to them. Earlier tonight, Brian ran DNA tests on our audience to isolate those with superior rock knowledge. Well, make them feel welcome as the band crunches a little organic granola. They're here and they're very excited. They were so nervous backstage, I had about a packet of cigarettes between them. <laughs> Hello, Martin. Julia, how are you? Now, Martin, as always, we like to ask our punters here the first concert you ever went to. It was either Ossabisa or Focus. Oh. Which goes back a long way. Yes, it does. Where? Mm. Festival Hall. Festival Hall, fantastic. <laughs> Don't know why I say that. <laughs> Um, and the first album you ever bought, Martin? Sergeant Peppers. Sergeant Peppers, of course. Nice. Very nice. Give yeah, me a little Wimbledon age. clap for that. A little Wimbledon clap. <laughs> How lovely to have a lovely lady. Tash, welcome. Thank you, Julia. Hello. Hello. Woo! Yeah, the one woman in the audience. Woo! <laughs> of course. They're few and far between the women up here. Now, Tash, uh, first concert that you ever went to, my friend? Uh, not embarrassingly, I'm proud of it. Pseudo Echo, Rock Around the Wales <gasps> in Bendigo. In Bendigo! I ben was 11. You're 11! <laughs> Did your mum was... go with you? No. Oh, God, no. no. I was right up the front. Who'd you go just... with? Oh. Um, Carolyn from Grade 6. Yes. Hello, Carolyn in Grade God. 6. Look where Tash is now, <laughs> hey? <laughs> James Lee, he had an impact on me at a very early age. I can imagine. And the first album you ever bought, Tash? Pseudo Echo. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Mick. G'day. How are you? Good, very good. Terrific. Now, Mick, uh, I'd like to know the first concert you ever went to. Uh, it was the Ramones in 89. Oh. <laughs> oh. My that's, a, that's the first one I'll admit to, anyway. But you see the credibility just goes, whoa. Uh. No. <laughs> and your first album? Red Sails in the Sunset by Midnight Oil. All right, Red Sails when Peter Garrett was, well, a musician. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> And Callan, hello, welcome. How are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. <laughs> Peeing my pants right now. He, look, it's true. <laughs> uh, Callan did share with me earlier backstage between cigarette number four and cigarette number five. He said, I'm peeing my pants, and I thought, oh, well, we won't mention that here, and no. there you go. I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> Lovely. Now, Callan, first concert? Uh, mine loses a bit of credibility. My first one was uh, Die Straits. Uh, come See? on! No, no! Come on! Callan, you've just confused them. Oh, no. <laughs> they don't know which way to go. Now, welcome one and all, Rock Wizards. Relax, breathe, know that you're here to have a good time. But two empty seats, two musicians waiting backstage, facing the prospect of humiliation, low self-esteem and paranoia, if you don't know who they are. Band, would you provide a musical diversion? <laughs> Can it be now? I was born into a musical family in Sydney in 1984, an auspicious year in the 20th century. From rock and roll to blues and soul, Dad loved singing and I guess it was inevitable that us kids would also end up on the stage. Mum and Dad also loved rhyming slang and it seems we will never live it down. I'm a little less rock than my siblings or my dad, even though people refer to me as a popular brand of Holden. My favourite instrument is the auto harp, and I've recently been in London working with Liam Finn. We are both second-generation rock royalty, and it feels like we've been friends forever now. 
Is it the Barnes? The Barnes boy? It's a Barnes girl. Mahalia. It's the other one. EJ. That's it, Mick. You're absolutely correct. EJ Barnes. Please make her I've got new love now, so sweet, so devon, and I always say no. In fact, to take him everywhere, I had an old love who would never leave his lair. But when I come on, I always knew you would be there. I miss the way you would feel, so familiar in my arms, and all. Scratches in your scars Weathered as you were I know that nothing new Could compare to you But it's too late for tears Mick's gone, EJ. It's a big family you've got. Isn't that right, Eliza Jane? It is. It very is. big. I'm going, I'm going to call you Eliza Jane all night because it's like being a Jane Austen novel. I love it. <laughs> EJ to her friends, Eliza Jane to me. That's a beautiful song. Thank you. Can I buy it now? Um, I think so. Can I? <laughs> Great. And you've been touring? Um, working hard? Yes, working yes. very hard. And uh, it is funny that your parents did like the old rhyming slang, tin lids. What was it like being in that little group of kids? I thought it was so much fun. Of course. Really. I, I was in the studio, you know, they told me I had great vibrato. You did I'll that. never live that down. Yeah, of course. I don't know what that <laughs> means, she thought. Of course not. Well, the first concert you ever went to, EJ, might be hard for you to come up with because you're probably in your mother's stomach for yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, I, I think... Obviously, it was Jimmy Barnes. Yes, obviously. Um, the first concert, though, that I have, like, clear memories of was Madonna, actually. Oh! <laughs> I know. Okay, I, cool. Although I've just been to so many concerts um, 
But yeah, that's like my youngest. Madonna, where you went, yeah, oh, that's like, what ooh, I'd like to do. Look at those tits. Yes, look at them. <laughs> yes, yes, I think we've all thought that about Madonna. The blue cones, you know. And the first album you ever bought. I'm dying to know. Sorry. Um, oh, God, another one. I Madonna's know. tits? No, it wasn't. <laughs> Probably Lou Reed, Transformer. Oh, all right. Which I love. Because of the hairless bear, I loved it. There you go. Now, EJ, you're all set. But who will she find herself pitted against? No hints from you, EJ. You've been out the back playing Boggle with him in the green room. <laughs> who can it be now? I was born in 1983 in Melbourne while my dad was tying up some loose ends. Things got a little crowded after my brother was born, but I always knew I would sing for a living. You betcha, I'd say. I formed my first band as a teenager. We released some EPs and a couple of albums and based ourselves in London for a couple of years before I went back to our family spiritual home of New Zealand. Yes. <laughs> I've gone mentally blank on his last name, Liam. It's Liam. Please make him very welcome, Liam Finn. Thank you. 
the first time I saw you play on stage, you were supporting... Well, you were helping your father, Neil, because he can't do it on his own, clearly. <laughs> um, and you were there, and you were 14, and it was at the State Theatre in Sydney, and you were like... You were a child of 14, but you had these enormous arms. These arms on this guitar. Really? It's like you must have been practising all the time. They've shrunk. Yeah. <laughs> They've shrunk in the meantime. And other areas have grown. Ah. Oh. Oh, see, he's Obviously. cracking on already. Cracking on, you know. <laughs> now, you, you've actually been working with Crowded House. You've actually been touring with them. Yes, I actually uh, just finished touring with them. I, I did the American run, but then I was like, you know, guys, that's it. Now, no. what's it like working with your father in close proximity like that all the time? It's actually really good fun. Really? Yeah. You actually get on? Oh, we get along, but I think he's mental. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrific. Um, now, the first concert you ever went to? Um, oh, I mean, other than Split Ends or Crowded House, I, sure. the first one that I really remember as leaving an impact was um, The Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, OK. Yes. Where? In New Zealand? It was in, no, it was actually in uh, Germany. Of in, course. In, in, uh, yeah. That was the next country I was going to say. New Zealand, Germany, obviously. Yeah. No, it was at a festival, Pink Pop, actually. Believe it or not, um, a, a crowded house were playing in between Smashing Pumpkins and Rage Against the Machine. Oh, great. <laughs> Woo! So, yeah, and that's where I first saw extreme fuzz guitar. Oh, OK. Blue and the mind. first album you bought with your own money, and as you said, I mean, you kids would have got stuff all over the shop because your families are going, oh, here, have a look at that. But that you went in and went, oh, I want this. I think, much to my parents' dismay, I bought Ace of Bass. I don't feel so bad about the Pseudo Echo reference now. Yes, I think <laughs> Pseudo Echo, Ace of Bass. What did they sing? Yes, they, we... What did they sing? They sang, um... All That She Wants Is Another Baby. Oh, <laughs> oh that's And I saw wants. the sign. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Right You're a it. man of mystery, <laughs> is what you are, Liam, full of contradictions. Well, let's get cracking. With a bit from here and a bit from there, it's time for local and or general. I'm Not There is a movie exploring the life and times of Bob Dylan using six different actors, all portraying Dylan. Which two of the following actors do not appear in the film? Kate Blanchett, Richard Gere, Brad Pitt, Heath Ledger, Gregory Peck. Yes. We're going to say Brad Pitt and Gregory Peck. You'll be 100% correct. Well done. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Who played Sid Vicious in Sid and Nancy? <laughs> yes. Give it a red hot go, I Tash. think it was Gary Oldman. I'll give you full points for that. Well done, lady. <laughs> Who played Sam in Richard Lowenstein's 1987 Australian films Dogs in <laughs> Space? Yes. Michael Hutchins. Yes, go. Michael Hutchins? That is correct. It's academic. <laughs> Name one musician who has played Michael Hutchins in In Excess since he left us. Uh, Terence Trent Darby, JD Fortune and uh, John Stevens. Freak. Correct. <laughs> Name the three Farris brothers. Yes. <laughs> So, Tim, Michael and Andrew. Oh, I can give you Tim and I can give you Andrew. Yes. John. John is correct. Well Thank done. You <laughs> nicked it Liam's having a hard time with all the Australian yeah. references. Bloody Australians. <laughs> Ask a New Zealand question. I will in a minute. <laughs> and Split some ends. English ones. <laughs> Which English brother said, my new songs are better than John Lennon's. One is called Songbird and it's better than anything on Revolver. Oh, it's got to be a Gallagher. Yes, it yeah. does. And he yeah. almost has a name that's similar to yours. No. no. Oh, Liam. No. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Dad. I'm used to people saying Liam Gallagher. That's correct. <laughs> Liam. I knew he knew that. Yeah. <laughs> Hum me a few bars of that song, Songbird. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. He's making that Right, up. my point exactly. No one actually knows the Songbird song. But thank you. That was really interesting. <laughs> Who performs the following TV show theme songs? South Park. 
Primus. Yes, yes correct, Liam. Well done. Whew, there's a confidence and an excitement in your buzzing. I love it. <laughs> Friends, I'll be there for you. Oh, God, the Rembrandts. Yes. The Rembrandts is correct. <laughs> well done, Tash. <laughs> Malcolm in the middle. Yes. Uh, they might be giants. They might be giants indeed. Well done. Kath and Kim. The Joker. Yep. It's them, isn't it? They do Which their one? Own. Kim. Kim. Kim is correct. Gina Riley. I'll give it to you good. Minder. Yes. Dennis Waterman. Dennis Waterman is correct. Yeah. Well done, Martin. Yeah. Oh. I could be so good for you. Oh, hilarious. Now, sing the next line and name the song title and artist. So if you've got the ability to sing, give it a red hot go. You never close your eyes anymore. I'm giving this to you because you can sing. <laughs> When I kiss your lips. Yes, that's beautiful. A bit more. There's no tenderness anymore in your fingertips. Yes! <laughs> Who sang that? Mick? Was it uh, the. Confer buzz in. If you're oh, not going yet. Righteous Brothers. Righteous Brothers Righteous is what I'm after. What was the name of the song? <laughs> You've lost that loving you feeling. You have lost that loving feeling. Don't talk to me that way. <gasps> you know it. Complete this lyric. <laughs> you were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. When I met you. Yeah. I took you out. Good. Something right. Spend you around. Yes. Turned you into something new. Very nice. <laughs> Human League. Correct. What's the name of the song? Don't You Want Me Baby. I Don't You Want Me Baby. Well done. <laughs> uh, I'm a walking in the rain. Falling out to feel the pain. Good. Wishing you were here by me. Come on, team. To end my misery and I wonder. Girls. I wonder. King Rock and Roll Racket is but a taster for our next round. Proudly presented in Riffarama Surround Sound. Yes, it's Million Dollar Riff. Band, make it so. <laughs> with a confidence, Mick. Well, um, and oh, and EJ. No, EJ, please. What do you think it could be? Da, da. <laughs> That's not the full name of the song. Thunderstruck, I'm sorry. Thank you, team. What was it? No, was it? Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck, who by? ACD. Very good, excellent. Next riff. Uh, everyone's a winner by hot chocolate. Everyone is a winner by hot chocolate. Excellent. <laughs> you strike me as a hot chocolate man, Callan. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, the 
there'll be points coming off, Callan. Yeah, and everyone's been touching these buzzers as well. I know, that's right. <laughs> and let's have a little listen to this. Wonderful is it to hear that played live, and you know I could have it all. Yes. That was Born to Run, Bruce Springsteen. I want to. That's right. I want to die with you, Wendy, on the streets tonight Yay! in an everlasting kiss. Brian and Dave, Pachinko. It's time for Brian to tread dangerously close to the line marked rock snobbery as he tears another classic song from rock's back pages and studies it with a magnifying glass. Time to get into the groove. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our song tonight is Be My Baby by the Ronettes. It's a record widely acknowledged as epitomising Phil Spector's famous wall of sound. Written by Phil, Jeff Barry and Ellie Greenwich and released in 1963, Spector rehearsed the song with Ronnie Bennett, soon to be Mrs Spector and the only Ronette to actually sing on it for weeks and did 42 takes before he was happy. Employing a full orchestra, he created a sound that is one of the most influential in music. Brian Wilson called Be My Baby his all-time favourite record and, of course, it's also the title of Ronnie Spector's autobiography, subtitled how I Survived Mascara, Miniskirts and Madness. And you could possibly add murder in that too. <laughs> OK, let's find out if you absorb that information like sponges or like bowling balls. Here come the questions for both teams, hands on le buzzer. When was the record released? Oh, good on you, Martin. 63. 63 is correct. Look at you. Mm. Name the 80s TV show that featured Be My Baby at the moment when the two lead actors finally consummated their smouldering relationship. Callan? I just like... Trigger. You can't just yeah. buzz and have nothing. Um, I'll give you a hint. No, go on. Sunny and Cher. <laughs> oh. 80s TV show. 80s TV show. Oh, I wasn't know this 90s. That's all right, confer. Moonlighting? Yes, it would say it louder, my darling. Moonlighting? Moonlighting is absolutely yes. correct. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch that. It was a great show. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Why? It was like, too late. Too late. Yeah. Bruce Willis, Sybil Shepherd, tension, sexual tension for about four series worth, and then finally they did it to be my baby. Bad. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. That's a, that's a lot of points you're getting yourself there. Can you come up with one film that has featured Be My Baby? Yes. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing's correct, Tash. <laughs> I can remember the scene. Yeah. Did you like the Dirty Dancing, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Yeah, Patrick Swayze. I went and saw that on my 13th birthday. Did you? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I did went... Did you go to the stage spectacular of Dirty Dancing? Yes. You did. <laughs> and it was shocking. <laughs> well done. Tash has got all the points. Who was the only Ronette to actually sing on the record? Uh, You've buzzed, Mick. You've got to talk. Um, Too slow. Sorry. Ronnie. Correct. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. May I have some scores, please? Yeah. Master Blaster gives our Muso guests the chance to trumpet their special subject knowledge and get tested on what they know <laughs> and what they don't know. We'll start with Liam. 
And your topic, good sir, is grunge. Now, uh, quick definition for grunge. How would you define it? No, this is not a question. It's just a general... What is it to As you? A, a, what is it to me? Grunge, yeah. Flannel shirts. <laughs> angsty lyrics. Yes. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Are you ready, Liam? <laughs> I think so. I think Good. I am, yeah. What American city is closely identified with grunge and why? <laughs> Correct, yes. Seattle. Seattle. Yes. And why? Open question. Because it's wet and people are stuck in their garages. There you are. Yeah. That is the correct answer. I've got that right there. Well done. Who was supposed to have first used the term in relation to the grunge scene? <laughs> correct. Mark Arm. Who's from, he? He's from Mudhoney. Oh, he is really? correct. Very good. Very, a little round of applause for that. That was quite good. I'm a 90s boy. He was what? You, you asked me something from the 80s and... You're fine. It. You don't no, know it. No. 90s. 90s, okay. you're right there. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. What is the record label indelibly linked to grunge? Sub Pop. You didn't buzz. Sub Pop. Thank you. I'm used to it now. We had a little rhythm going. I was yeah, mixing I know. the Yeah, I was mixing it up. You were mixing yeah. it up. All right, fair enough. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> if James Brown is the godfather of soul, who has been dubbed the godfather of grunge? That's, that, that, that's very, uh, that comes down, well, I'd say Kurt Cobain, but... Godfather, older. The Godfather, old person. Older. If you had to pick an old person, you know. <laughs> the Godfather of grunge. Follow the Kurt line. Follow the, follow the Kurt. Neil up, Young. Up that's to correct. Yes, Neil yeah. Young, very I good. I guess so, yeah, yeah flannel yeah. shirts. Oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair Would you enough. Agree with that? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. totally, yeah. I totally. Would, I I'm wouldn't with you. know. I wouldn't know. Thank you, Liam. I'm yeah. glad you agree. Good. <laughs> and finally, which Australian band originally from Western Australia are often quoted as being a major influence on the grunge movement? <laughs> correct. The scientists. Yes. The scientists, Kim Salmon, absolutely oh, correct. <laughs> Liam, you've earned your team some much-needed points. Well done, you. But now, let's not forget about Eliza Jane. And your topic, EJ, the late American singer-songwriter Elliot Smith, a tragic figure with a vocal style once described as whispery, spiderweb thin. Beautiful guy, beautiful voice. I chose him because at least he has a short career span. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. I love him. But... Who knew you were so evil? <laughs> Are you ready, lady? Oh, that's going to get me now. I'm going to screw this up. You never know. I'm ready. What was the name of the band Elliot was in prior to his solo career? <laughs> yes. Heat Miser. Heat Miser's correct, young lady. Which Elliot Smith song used for the film Goodwill Hunting was nominated for an Academy Award? <laughs> correct. Miss Misery. Oh, she's good. Very <laughs> nice. Woo. Oh, thank you. That's the <laughs> oh, Sorry. <laughs> That was a suit. Do you get excited? The title of his second LP, Either Or, was taken from which Danish philosopher's work? I say Danish <laughs> philosopher, as opposed to your French or your uh, Polish. Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard is absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Okay. I can just see. You, EJ, at night in bed, you've got your Jane Austens <laughs> on one side, your Kierkegaard on the other side. Am I Having so a quick flip through, lovely. You know, a bit of Elliot on the iPod. <laughs> what band did Elliot Smith say he'd been listening to incessantly from the age of four? The Beatles. The Beatles is correct. And finally, a question. Should you choose to accept it? The album Figure Eight was partially recorded in what studio? Abbey Road. Full points for EJ Barnes. <laughs> but is their brilliance reflected in their scores? Dave and Brian, scores, please.
of you may think we're done and dusted for another week, but I reckon the Rock Quiz Orchestra might have a musical retort to that. Am I right, lads? <laughs> of course I am. Rock Quizzes, I will see you on the other side of these questions. Good luck. Your time starts... Now. They come in a rainbow of colours. Sometimes they have light bulbs or window washers or they spell Elton and Zoom. What are they? Yes. Sunglasses? His glasses, absolutely correct. Well done. <laughs> what song was Bob Dylan talking about when he said it was Jimmy's song? I just wrote it. Yes. Hurricane? No, 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 no all no, on the watchtower. No, no. Oh, he's in there all along the watchtower, is correct. Oh, gee. I just want to remind you, there is no prize. So. There is between our families. Oh! the family down by my dad on the way to the airport. Oh, yeah. really? Right. I'm feeling pressured. Right, hey, right. So there's been a bit of pressure. I'll say well, that's spitting. There's been a bit of parental pressure, has there? Well, maybe from the barn side. What's the day <laughs> Now, I have to say, I have to say, when we did have Jimmy and Mahalia on, your father is a little competitive. Isn't he? I'm the family loser. The one that, in board games, someone oh, no. I'm OK with it. And here, yeah. Do I get points for that? You don't want Jimmy... <laughs> for you being... don't want Jimmy Barnes to yell at you. <laughs> yes, that's right. And any parental pressure from you? No, the Finns don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they don't give a tinker's cuss. I love it. All right, then. Smarty trousers, hands on buzzers. Who successfully covered these songs? China Girl by Iggy Pop. Yes. David Bowie. David Bowie is correct. Simon and Garfunkel's Hazy Shade of Winter. The Bengals. Well done, Mick. Do you like a girly song? I do. Great. <laughs> John Lennon's Jealous Guy. Donny mm. Hathaway. Brian Ferry. Hey, Dad. Oh, it was so much. Donny Hathaway. <laughs> Double points. Come in. It's yep. good. I love it all. Behind Blue Eyes by The Who. Well, I don't know if it's successfully. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Limp Biscuit? Limp Biscuit's absolutely correct. Well done. It's embarrassing, I know that. No, yes. it's just worth it to hear a New Zealander say Limp Biscuit. Yes. <laughs> Tainted Love by Gloria Jones. Soft Cell. Well done, you. Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell. Oh, Third Eye Blind. County Crows. County, County Crows. Crows. Oh, oh. Same band, isn't it? Oh, yes, see. <laughs> Barnes versus Finn, it's sad. <laughs> the Temptations, ain't too proud to beg. Rolling Stones. Thank you, Martin. The sensible voice at the end of the line. Scores That's a lovely. level. Scores a level. Scores a level. Who was Satchmo? Yes. Um, yes. Um, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Oh, you were so close, Martin. Who was Slowhand or God? Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton's yep. correct. Fast on the buzzer, ready to go, playing for the money. Excellent. Old Blue Eyes. Mm. Frank, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Oh, and everyone seems to know that answer. That's terrific. Beautiful tone, my son. Beautiful, <laughs> lovely. Tambor. Who said time was on their side? Rolling Stones. Correct. <laughs> In deference to the strict morals of Ed Sullivan, who changed the lyrics from Let's Spend the Night Together? Rolling Stones. Correct. Who asked if anybody really knew what time it was? Um, Chicago. Yes. Well done, Martin. Who said that the first one now will later be last because the times are a-changing? Bob Dylan. Good girl. Who said the times keep on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future? Uh, the Jay Giles Band. No. Steve Miliband. Yes, Steve Miliband's yes, five, correct! Five, four, three, two, one... <laughs> And Dave, they say winners are grinners. Who's got a smile on their dial tonight? Sadly, we are out of time, but remember, if you have fingers, a brain and, most importantly, a computer, then join those dots and visit us on the internet. Don't forget, as Jimi Hendrix once said, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. To take us out tonight, 
Liam and EJ are going to perform a Neil Young song that's close to their hearts and perhaps a little revealing. That's Vidanya. have a lovely lady Tash welcome thank you Julia hello hello Woo! yeah the one woman in the audience <laughs> Woo! of course they're few and far between the women up here now Tash uh, first concert that you ever went to my friend uh, not embarrassingly I'm proud of it pseudo echo rock around the Wales <gasps> in Bendigo in Bendigo I Bendigo. was 11 you're 11 <laughs> did your mum was... go with you no oh god no, no. I was right up the front who did you go just... with um, Carolyn from grade six. Yes. Hello, Carolyn in grade God. six. Look where Tash is now, <laughs> hey? <laughs> James Lee, he had an impact on me at a very early age. I can imagine. And the first album you ever bought, Tash? Pseudo Echo. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Mick. G'day. How are you? Good. Very good. Terrific. Now, Mick, uh, I'd like to know the first concert you ever went to. Uh, it was the Ramones in 89. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, that's, a, that's the first one I'll admit to, anyway. But you see the credibility, he just goes, whoa. <laughs> and, and your first album? Red Sails and the Sunset by Midnight Oil. All right, Red Sails when Peter Garrett was, well, a musician. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and Callan, hello, welcome. How are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. <laughs> Peeing my pants right now. He, look, it's true. <laughs> uh, Callan. 
gentleman did share with me earlier backstage between cigarette number four and cigarette number five. He said, I'm peeing my pants. And I thought, oh, well, we won't mention that here. And there you go. I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> Lovely. Now, Carolyn, first concert? Uh, mine loses a bit of credibility. My first one was uh, Die Straits. Uh, come See? on! No, no! Come on! Carolyn, you've just confused them. Uh, they don't know which way to go. Now, welcome one and all, Rock Wizards. Relax, breathe, know that you're here to have a good time. But two empty seats, two musicians waiting backstage, facing the prospect of humiliation, low self-esteem and paranoia, if you don't know who they are. Band, would you provide a musical diversion? <laughs> Can it be now? I was born into a musical family in Sydney in 1984, an auspicious year in the 20th century. From rock and roll to blues and soul, Dad loved singing and I guess it was inevitable that us kids would also end up on the stage. Mum and Dad also loved rhyming slang and it seems we will never live it down. I'm a little less rock than my siblings or my dad, even though people refer to me as a popular brand of Holden. My favourite instrument is the auto harp, and I've recently been in London working with Liam Finn. We are both second generation rock royalty and it feels like we've been... Moonlighting? Say it louder, my darling. Moonlighting? Moonlighting is absolutely yes. correct! <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch that. It was a great show! I wasn't allowed to watch it. Why? It was like, too late. Too late. Yeah. Bruce Willis, Sybil Shepherd, tension, sexual tension for about four series worth and then finally they did it to be my baby. Bad. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. That's a, that's a lot of points you're getting yourself there. Can you come up with one film that has featured Be My Baby? Yes. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing's correct, Tash. <laughs> I can remember the scene. Yeah. Did you like the Dirty Dancing, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Yeah, Patrick Swayze. I went and saw that on my 13th birthday. Did you? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I did went... Did you go to the stage spectacular of Dirty Dance? Yes. You did. <laughs> and it was shocking. <laughs> well done. Tash has got all the points. Who was the only Ronette to actually sing on the record? Uh, You've buzzed, Mick. You've got to talk. Um, Too slow. Sorry. Ronnie? Correct. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. May I have some scores, please? Yeah. Master Blaster gives our muso guests the chance to trumpet their special subject knowledge and get tested on what they know <laughs> and what they don't know. We'll start with Liam. And your topic, good sir, is grunge. Now, a uh, quick definition for grunge. How would you define it? Not, this is not a question, it's just a general... What is it to is you? It, uh, what is it to me? Grunge, yeah. Flannel shirts, <laughs> angsty lyrics. Yes. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Are you ready, Liam? <laughs> I think so. I think Good. I am. Yep. What American city is closely identified with grunge and why? <laughs> Correct. Yes. Seattle. Seattle. Yes. And why? Open question. Because it's wet and people are stuck in their garages. There you are. That, that like is that. the correct answer. I've got that right there. Well done. <laughs> Who was supposed to have first used the term in relation to the grunge scene? <laughs> Correct. Mark Arm. Who's from, he? He's from Mud Honey. Oh, he is really? correct. Very good. Very a little round of applause for that. That was quite good. I'm the nineties boy, the barn side. What's the date? Uh. <laughs> now I have to say, I have to say, when we did have Jimmy and Mahalia on, your father is a little competitive. Isn't he? <laughs> I'm the family loser, the one that in board games someone oh, yes. I'm okay with it. And here, yeah. Do I get points for that? You don't want Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want Jimmy Barnes to yell at you. <laughs> yes, that's right. 
And any parental pressure from you? No, the Finns don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they don't give a tinker's cuss. I love it. All right then, smarty trousers, hands on buzzers. Who successfully covered these songs? China Girl by Iggy Pop. Yes. David Bowie. David Bowie is correct. Simon and Garfunkel's Hazy Shade of Winter. The Bengals. Well done, Mick. You like a girly song? I do. Great. <laughs> John Lennon's Jealous Guy. Donny mm. Hathaway. Brian Ferry. Hey, Dad. Oh, it was so much. Donny Hathaway. <laughs> Jack, all come in. It's yes. good. I love it all. Behind Blue Eyes by The Who. Well, I don't know if it's successfully. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Limp Biscuit? Limp Biscuit's absolutely correct. Well done. It's embarrassing, I know that. No, yes. it's just worth it to hear a New Zealander say Limp Biscuit. Yes. <laughs> Tainted Love by Gloria Jones. Soft Cell. Well done, you. Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell. Oh, Third Eye Blind. County Crows. County, County Crows. Crows. Oh, Same band, isn't it? Oh, you see? <laughs> Barnes versus Finn, it's sad. <laughs> the Temptations, ain't too proud to beg. Rolling Stones. Thank yes. you, Martin. The sensible voice at the end of the line. Scores That's a lovely. level. Scores a level. Scores a level. <laughs> Who was Satchmo? Yes. Um, yes. Um, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Ooh, you were so close, Martin. Who was Slowhand or God? Eric Clapton. Eric yep. Clapton's correct. Fast on the buzzer, ready to go, playing for the money. Excellent. Old Blue Eyes. Mm. Frank, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Oh, and everyone seems to know that answer. That's terrific. A beautiful tone, my son. Beautiful, <laughs> lovely. Timber. Who said time was on their side? Rolling Stones. Correct. <laughs> In deference to the strict morals of Ed Sullivan, who changed the lyrics from Let's Spend the Night Together? Rolling Stones. Correct. Who asked if anybody really knew what time it was? Um, Chicago. Yes. Well done, Martin. Who said that the first one now will later be last because the times are a-changing? Bob Dylan. Good girl. Who said the times keep on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future? Uh, the Jay Giles Band. No. Steve Miliband. Yes, yeah, Steve Miliband's yes, five, correct! Five, four, three, two, one... <laughs> Taxi by Joni Mitchell. Oh, Third Eye Blind. County Crows. County, County Crows. Crows. Oh, same band, isn't it? Oh, you see? <laughs> Barnes versus Finn, it's sad. <laughs> the Temptations, ain't too proud to beg. Rolling Stones. Thank yes. you, Martin. The yeah. sensible voice at the end of the line. Scores That's a lovely. level. Scores a level. Scores a level. <laughs> Who was Satchmo? Yes. Um, yes. Um, yes. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Oh, you were yeah. so close, Martin. <laughs> Who was... Slow hand or God? Eric Clapton. Eric yep. Clapton's correct. Fast on the buzzer, ready to go, playing for the money. Excellent. Old Blue Eyes. Mm. Frank, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Oh, and everyone seems to know that answer. That's terrific. A beautiful time, my son. Beautiful, Harmony. lovely. Timber. Who said time was on their side? Rolling Stones. Correct. <laughs> In deference to the strict morals of Ed Sullivan, who changed the lyrics from Let's Spend the Night Together? Rolling Stones. Correct. Who asked if anybody really knew what time it was? Um, Chicago. Yes. Well done, Martin. Who said that the first one now will later be last because the times are a-changing? Bob Dylan. Good girl. Who said the times keep on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future? Uh, the Jay Giles Band. No. Steve Miliband. Yes, yeah, Steve Miliband's yes, five, correct! Five, four, three, two, one... <laughs> They say winners are grinners. Who's got a smile on their dial tonight? Sadly, we are out of time, but remember, if you have fingers, a brain, and most importantly, a computer, then join those dots and visit us on the internet. Don't forget, as Jimi Hendrix once said, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. To take us out tonight, 
Liam and EJ are going to perform a Neil Young song that's close to their hearts and perhaps a little revealing. That's Vidanya. Sadly, we are out of time, but remember, if you have fingers, a brain and most importantly a computer, then join those dots and visit us on the internet. Don't forget, as Jimi Hendrix once said, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. To take us out tonight, Liam and EJ are going to perform a Neil Young song that's close to their hearts and perhaps a little revealing. That's Vidanya. Yeah.
you know, Mahalia, Mick's gone, EJ. It's a big family you've got. Isn't that right, Eliza Jane? It is. It very is. big. I'm going, I'm going to call you Eliza Jane all night because it's like being a Jane Austen novel. I love it. <laughs> EJ to her friends, Eliza Jane to me. That's a beautiful song. Thank you. Can I buy it now? Um, I think so. Can I? <laughs> Great. And you've been touring? Um, working hard? Yes, working yes. very hard. And uh, it is funny that your parents did like the old rhyming slang, tin lids. What was it like being in that little group of kids? I thought it was sponsored, oh. though, that... I have like clear memories of was Madonna actually. Oh, <laughs> I know. Okay, I, cool. Although I've just been to so many concerts, um, but yeah, that's like my youngest. Madonna, where you went? Hey, well, that's like, what I'd like to do. Look at those tits. Yes, look at them. <laughs> yes, yes. I think we've all thought that about Madonna. Those little cones, you know. And the first album you ever bought? I'm dying to know. Sorry. Um, oh, God, another one. I Madonna's know. tits? No, it was <laughs> Probably Lou Reed, Transformer. Oh, all right. Which Woo! I love. Because of the hairless bear, I loved it. There you go. Now, EJ, you're all set. But who will she find herself pitted against? No hints from you, EJ. You've been out the back playing Boggle with him in the green room. <laughs> who can it be now? I was born in 1983 in Melbourne while my dad was tying up some loose ends. Things got a little crowded after my brother was born, but I always knew I would sing for a living. You betcha, I'd say. I formed my first band as a teenager. We released some EPs and a couple of albums and based ourselves in London for a couple of years before I went back to our family spiritual home of New Zealand. <coughs> yes. <laughs> I've gone mentally blank on his last name, <laughs> Liam. It's Liam. Please make him very welcome, Liam Finn. <laughs> autobiography subtitled How I Survived Mascara, Miniskirts and Madness. And you could possibly add murder in that too. <laughs> OK, let's find out if you absorb that information like sponges or like bowling balls. Here come the questions for both teams, hands on le buzzer. When was the record released? Oh, good on you, Martin. 63. 63 is correct. Look at you. Mm. Name the 80s TV show that featured Be My Baby at the moment when the two lead actors finally consummated their smouldering relationship. Callum? I just like... Trigger. You can't just buzz and have nothing. Um, I'll give you a hint. No, go on. Sunny and Cher. No. <laughs> oh. 80s TV show. 80s TV show. Oh, I wasn't know this 90s. That's all right, confer. Moonlighting? Oh, no. Yes, would say it louder, my darling. Moonlighting? Moonlighting is absolutely yes. correct. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch that. It was a great show. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Why? It was like, too late. Too late. Yeah. Bruce Willis, Sybil Shepherd, tension, sexual tension for about four series worth, and then finally they did it to be my baby. Bad. It was great, yeah. <laughs> 
Good girl. That's a, that's a lot of points you're getting yourself there. Can you come up with one film that has featured Be My Baby? Yes. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing's correct, Tash. <laughs> I can remember the scene. Yeah, did you like the Dirty Dancing, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Yeah, Patrick Swayze. I went and saw that on my 13th birthday. Did you? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I did, went, ooh. Did you go to the stage spectacular of Dirty Dancing? Yes. You did. <laughs> and it was shocking. <laughs> Done. Tasha's got all the points. Who was the only Ronette to actually sing on the record? Uh, You've buzzed, Mick. You've got to talk. Um, Too slow. Sorry. Ronnie. Correct. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. May I have some scores, please? Yeah. Oh! That's what we like. Master Blaster gives our Muso guests the chance to trumpet their special subject knowledge and get tested on what they know <laughs> and what they don't know. We'll start with Liam. He's the godfather of soul. Who has been dubbed the godfather of grunge? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's very... Uh, that comes down... Well, I'd say Kurt Cobain, but... Godfather, the older. Godfather, old person. Older. If you had to pick an old person... You know. The godfather of grunge. Follow the Kurt line. Follow the, follow the Kurt. Neil up, Young. That's up to correct. Yes, Neil yeah. Young. Very I good. I guess so, yeah. Excellent. Flannel shirts. But, oh, OK, yeah, fair enough. Fair Would enough. you agree with that? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. totally, yeah. I totally. Would, I wouldn't with you. know. I wouldn't know. Thank you, Liam. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you agree. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and finally... Which Australian band, originally from Western Australia, are often quoted as being a major influence on the grunge movement? <laughs> correct. The scientists. Yes. The scientists. Kim Salmon, absolutely correct. <laughs> well, Liam, you've earned your team some much-needed points. Well done you. But now, let's not forget about Eliza Jane. And your topic, EJ, the late American singer-songwriter Elliot Smith. A tragic figure with a vocal style once described as whispery, spiderweb thin. Beautiful guy, beautiful voice. I chose him because at least he has a short career span. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. I love him. But... Who knew you were so evil? <laughs> Are you ready, lady? Oh, that's going to get me now. I'm going to screw this up. You never know. I'm ready. What was the name of the band Elliot was in prior to his solo career? <laughs> yes. Heat Miser. Heat Miser's correct, young lady. Which Elliot Smith song used for the film Goodwill Hunting was nominated for an Academy Award? <laughs> correct. Miss Misery. Oh, she's good. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's the <laughs> <up. laughs> Sorry. That was a suit. It's premature fuzzulation. Do you get excited? <laughs> the title of his second LP, Either Or, was taken from which Danish philosopher's work? I say Danish <laughs> philosopher, as opposed to your French or your uh... Polish. Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard is absolutely correct. Oh, oh, oh. I can just see you, EJ, at night in bed. You've got your Jane Austens <laughs> on one side, your Kierkegaard on the other side. Am I Having so a quick flip through. Lovely. You know, a bit of Elliot on the iPod. <laughs> what band did Elliot Smith say he'd been listening to incessantly from the age of four? The Beatles. The Beatles is correct. And finally, a question. Should you choose to accept it? The album Figure Eight was partially recorded in what studio? Abbey Road. Full points for EJ Barnes. <laughs> but is their brilliance reflected in their score? Yes, Callan. Uh, everyone's a winner by hot chocolate. Everyone is a winner by hot chocolate. Excellent. 
You strike me as a hot chocolate man, Callan. You know it. <laughs> Gee, there'll be points coming off, Callan. Yeah, and everyone's been touching these buzzers as well. I know, <laughs> that's right. Next and part. let's have a little listen to this. Wonderful is it to hear that played live, and you know I could have it all. Yes. That was Born to Run, Bruce Springsteen. I want to. That's right. I want to die with you, Wendy, on the streets tonight Yay! in an everlasting kiss. Brian and Dave, Pachinko. It's time for Brian to tread dangerously close to the line marked Rock Snobbery as he tears another classic song from Rock's back pages and studies it with a magnifying glass. Time to get into the groove. Ladies and gentlemen, our song tonight is Be My Baby by the Ronettes. It's a record widely acknowledged as epitomising Phil Spector's famous wall of sound. Written by Phil, Jeff Barry and Ellie Greenwich and released in 1963, Spector rehearsed the song with Ronnie Bennett, soon to be Mrs Spector and the only Ronette to actually sing on it for weeks and did 42 takes before he was happy. Employing a full orchestra, he created a sound that is one of the most influential in music. Brian Wilson called Be My Baby his all-time favourite record and, of course, it's also the title of Ronnie Spector's autobiography, subtitled how I Survive Mascara, Miniskirts and Madness. And you could possibly add murder in that too. <laughs> OK, let's find out if you absorb that information like sponges or like bowling balls. Here come the questions for both teams, hands on le buzzer. When was the record released? Oh, good on you, Martin. 63. 63 is correct. Look at you. Mm. Name the 80s TV show that featured Be My Baby at the moment when the...